Hello and welcome to Smite Team Fighting School. Today I'll be looking at the role everyone calls first, the support. So let's talk about what the support actually does. The support has four main jobs, the first of which is to initiate. Gods like Athena and Bacchus have gap closers in their kit, while gods like Geb and Ymir have to get blink to fully realise their initiation potential. The outcome of a team fight can be determined by its initiation. Don't underestimate the difficulty or importance of this job. Initiation will be talked about in more depth later. The second function of the support is to peel. Imagine your squishies as a delicious orangey fruit. The enemy team is the bitter peel. They want nothing more than to hug your squishies to death. You want to try your hardest to separate the sticky peel from the orangey fruit. You achieve this with your crowd control. Taunting that Kali off your Artemis, freezing that Tyr who's tossing about your Rama, it's all peel. Your third job is that of body blocking auto attacks. Your ADC and the enemy ADC are dueling it out. Standing between them pretty much guarantees your ADC's victory. It's important to know when to body block and when not to. Don't just take unnecessary poke. And don't be a hero by eating Anher's ult. Know what you can and cannot block. Your final team fighting job is counter initiating. There are certain situations in which you will want to blink out the enemy team as opposed to peeling for that Anhar who's already been frozen by Ymir. Don't confuse this with the kind of counter initiations performed by assassins, i.e. where the assassin waits till the end of the team fight. You need to get in there and do your job to help the assassin do theirs. Let's talk more in depth on the subject of initiations. It's important to trust your instincts. Your instincts will develop as you play more and more. You can't afford to miss opportunities by constantly second-guessing yourself. Don't ask your team, should I blink in? You have to take charge and go for it. This doesn't mean it's okay to blindly initiate every chance you get. You have to constantly analyse the situation to see if conditions are in your favour. If you are talking to your team, say something along the lines of, okay, the next good opportunity I get to engage, I will. This should be all the warning they need. Perhaps the most important skill a support can have is the ability to count to five. Someone's dead in the enemy team and it's a 4v5, force a fight. Their Loki is split pushing and it's a 4v5 at fire giant, go go go. You have to make sure you get more than the Loki, i.e. a 1 4v5 team fight and fire giant. You can't hold on to your initiation waiting for the perfect circumstances. Unless you're playing against bots, the perfect condition of five enemies hugging each other will hardly ever be met. You can get three in a blink ult, go for it. Your blink freeze can delete an out of position high priority target, go for it. Always waiting for the perfect scenario will ensure you miss perfectly viable windows of opportunity. Having said that, hitting a five man geb ult doesn't necessarily mean you did your job well. Your Ram is dead and your Raz getting red buff. Your five man alt can't win a 3v5. That's not a team fight, it's a three man suicide. Let's look at the different play decisions you might make based on how your carries are doing. If your carries are ahead, protecting them should be a high priority. That doesn't mean you can't give a strong initiation. It just means your sexy ADC should always be on your mind. If the enemy Baste is in the habit of going for your AMC soon after your Cataclysm, think about your cooldowns and consider saving your knockup for when she does. Don't let a good early game advantage go to waste by letting your squishies get blown up. Your CC allows your carries to reach their full damage potential. Body block for that fed AMC and peel for that Vulcan. Let's look at the other side of the coin. Imagine your ADC is really behind. It's 30 minutes into the game and your Anher is 0 slash 10. However, your Kali is even or a little behind. The first thing you should do is determine the carry you want to eliminate the most. In this example, let's say it's the enemy Artemis. You need to inform the team of your target before you blow your kit on them. Don't underestimate your damage. You can't 100 to 0 someone, but you can make it easy for a teammate to clean up. The enemy team will often home in on your behind carry, neglecting to worry about their ahead one. Don't think about Anher or peeling for him. His use in this situation is bait for the enemy team. This can level the playing field and has the potential to turn a game around.
I like to think matchmaking is testing to see how you adapt when playing with a struggling teammate. There's one last situation I want to consider. Imagine the enemy team has three tanky frontliners, fairly common in this meta, let's say two guardians and a warrior. In this situation you can't afford to just gap close out the enemy backline. Your team won't be able to follow up due to the orgy of CC the enemy frontline has. In this situation you have to work your way methodically from the front of the enemy team to the back. This is made possible due to your ADC's anti-tank potential. It's your job to peel in this situation. It might seem counterintuitive to attack the tanks first, but it's much better than blinking in only to leave your carries to a buffet of Ares chains, Athena taunts and tear scoops. When the meta changes, you can't afford to cling on to old habits, adapt or be left behind. I've been Plague Player and that's enough of me for one day. I plan to cover team fighting for all the roles. Let me know in the comments what role you want to see next. Thanks for watching.